Hi, it's Katie from Katie Goes Platinum, and I'm here today with Tarla. And uh, we met in Silver Revolution, the Facebook group that I admin for Going Gray. And Tarla mentioned in passing that she used wigs to help her transition to gray hair. And so I wanted to ask her all about that. So that's why we're here today. So Hello. thank you for being with us. <laughs> so your hair is gorgeous, by the way. I love the color and it's thick. Thank you. Um, I, gosh, it feels like it's been throughout the years. Um, and it's so funny because I'm jealous of like your color because I like the more <laughs> silver silvery and mine has that kind of champagne tote. But we, we kind of get what we get. And so that's what makes gray hair unique. If you don't mind telling us, how old were you when you decided that you were gonna <laughs> get rid of the hair dye? You don't have to tell us if, if you want to. And then what made you decide? And then how did you go about it? Well, I'll just tell you I'm in my forties. So we'll go okay. there. Um, but like when I was literally five, I already had silver strands of my hair. I mean, when I was a little child and then at 19, they started coming in. So. Uh, what happened was like, like many women, I wanted to always, you know, dye my hair. Um, everyone, you know, is like, oh, don't go gray. It's going to make you look old, all that stuff. And I never had any intention. Like I would never have guessed that I'd be sitting here talking to you about this situation. But um, what happened is, is that, um, you know, as, as you can see, my hair is so light and I was naturally a dark brunette, almost black. And so I dyed my hair black. And as soon as the, um, as soon as the gray would come in, it was like white against black. And it was so noticeable. And it went from uh, dying every four weeks to every three weeks and two weeks. And literally I was dying every Saturday myself. I was doing my roots. And I think my body just reacted to the toxicity of the dye, to be really honest. I, I started having rashes come up my legs. Like one time when I was dying my hair, which scared the hell out of me. Um, another time I, I literally broke out in head to toe highs. So that was the beginning. I think that was your question. That is why I decided to go gray because I just felt like I'm not going to risk my life and have my throat closed, obviously, just so that I can be vain and have, you know, dark hair color, even though that was initially my preference. Yeah, I think that's smart that you listen to your body. Like when I look back on it, I started having reactions to the dye probably two years before I decided to stop dying. And Mm -hmm. I, I would, I went to the salon for the most part. Sometimes I dyed it at home, but, um, wherever I dyed it, I would start itching really badly, like right here. And it got to the point where it's almost unbearable. Did you ever find out what in the dye you were allergic to, or do you just, do you just decide um, just to stop? Yeah. I'm assuming it's PPD. That's the toxin that creates color. So a little story with that is that, you know, I was dying dark. Right. And then I, I did a lot of research. I'm a researcher, which is how I first came across you before even seeing you in that group. Mm -hmm. And, um, I found out that blonde dye has the least amount of PPD. That's the toxin that creates the color. So mm -hmm. it wasn't removed, but I thought, well, you know, I don't know for a fact, I, I just know I'm allergic to something. And I thought, well, let me try that. And same thing as you, I was able to do that maybe for about a year. Cause I said, well, at least I'm not gray, you know, yeah. and I did that for about a year. And then, um, same thing. I, you know, it was the itching and I've seen a lot of women have that reaction. They think they're just itching. It's an allergic reaction. Um, right. and then by the end of that, it was like, like kind of the last two appointments I had, like I had been fine. And then it started having this burning itching. So I stopped that. And actually the next step is I even tried henna. I tried henna. Um, and then to um, go brown henna's orange, you have to use indigo. I became allergic to indigo. Oh my so gosh. I, I'm literally like all out of <laughs> options here. So I started itching with that too. Um, indigo has mold spores in it. Um, and mm. a lot of people are allergic to mold. Um, so I had, I literally had no choice. So it's like, I had to be gray unless I want to like, you know, be on Benadryl every day and risk my life. So obviously I'm not going to do that. I, I think it's so smart that you listened to it and just stopped when it became obvious that you just couldn't do it anymore. And it's hard. Yeah. I mean, uh, when I look back, I, I could have gone gray probably as early as my mid thirties. I probably was pretty gray, but I did it till I was almost 50. And now when I look back, I, and I see all these other women in their thirties and forties going gray. I wish I had, but at the time nobody else was doing it. So I didn't feel like I could, you know, which is yeah. annoying to me that I, I even thought that, but that's just, you know, we all go through those phases, but I think, I think your hair looks beautiful and healthy. So, Thank um, you. so how long did it take you to, to achieve this level of gray? Like, you know, did you tell us, how, did you grow out your dye or are you, you know, how did that go? You said you went cold Turkey, right? 
I went cold turkey uh, about, I'm going to say it was, a, it's been about two years, um, probably about a year and a half is when it was fully gray by chopping off all the dark ends. So, uh, so I'm an online marketer and um, I have to do Facebook live videos frequently. Um, and I personally didn't feel comfortable having that demarcation line. I think some women can get away with it more. I mean, anyone can do what they want, but I mean, it's easier, I think, for some women, because I feel like there's not a much of a difference between the color of their gray and their hair. Mm -hmm. But when you have black hair and you have light growth like this, it's very, very obvious. There's no way for me to really masquerade it. And I honestly kind of, I hate to say it, but I felt like embarrassed because I thought, well, how am I going to like go on there and feel professional? And my hair is like two different colors, even though I totally love that women do that. It just, for me personally, like I didn't feel comfortable. And right. so I don't know where I got this idea, um, but I think I was just researching like, oh my God, how can I fix this situation? It probably was off of YouTube somewhere. And I just said, I'm just going to get a wig. And I was never somebody who wanted to like wear wigs or thought, you know, I, I know like it's very popular now with like people like Kylie Jenner and like, you know, all these celebrities are wearing wigs and they've made it cool, thankfully. And, and a lot of the fashion runways have made gray cool also. But um, so I went to a wig shop in Hollywood mm -hmm. um, and I went and I, I was looking for wigs and I just felt really uncomfortable even trying on the wigs. I didn't feel like I thought, oh my God, this is going to look like a wig. People are going to know I'm wearing a wig. And the whole idea behind this was that I would have, you know, long, dark hair and I was trying to do a wig that looked just like my hair. So basically nobody would know. It wasn't a different color wig. It was like my hair would look maybe a little thicker, but maybe they would think I had extensions, but they wouldn't really know what happened. And I, oh my gosh, I spent $2,000 on my first wig. Uh, so it was a huge investment, but it's, it's real hair. Um, I, there's different levels of wigs. I think they go up to like, I think Eastern European is supposed to be known as the nicest hair. And I think those are like four or $5,000 wigs, 3000. The one I got, I believe was Indian hair, maybe. Um, it's, it's, you know, really pretty. And, um, I felt confident. So I felt like more confident, honestly, than with my own hair. Cause you know, we all have, like, I feel today, bad hair days. And I was like, oh great. I'll never have a bad hair day. And it kind of started like that. And then I started getting more wigs with different colors. So people would know, oh, she's wearing a wig when my hair's pink. But I thought, well, maybe now they'll, they'll think my other one's a wig, but they won't know. I just, it was kind of like my own little kind of funny secret that like nobody knew except my real friends offline. I think that's a great idea. It's also fun, you know, like some, some women yeah. don't like makeup, but like I've always liked makeup because I feel like it's kind of fun to make yourself look completely different, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I always felt like for most guys, you know, they, they don't feel comfortable doing that. They don't have the outlets to make themselves look completely different like we do, you know? And yeah. so I think wigs, it never even occurred to me to, to try wigs. I think that's so cool. And um, do you mind mentioning which wig shop you went to in Hollywood? I think it's called the wig shop. Actually, I haven't been there um, in a long time, I actually haven't been there due to COVID because I want to bring my wig in to get washed. So they'll basically also wash the wig for you and they'll style it with a flat iron because, um, the, the hair and wigs, like I'll, I'll show you, I have some synthetic ones that are really cheap. Um, and I know where I bought those. So I can tell everyone, your audience, um, with the, uh, more expensive wig, um, I'm scared to wash that or touch that one because obviously it was an investment. So they need to wash it for me. And I think it's, I forget what I pay about $60 or something. And you bring it in and they'll wash it and they'll flat iron it and style it for you. And they'll part it, whatever in the center off to the side, however you want it. Um, but I have to go in and I, you know, I haven't cause of COVID. So I was like, <laughs> you know, and I don't wear them often. Um, you only need to wash a wig about once like every 30 times that you, you wear it. So it's not like normal hair, you don't wash it frequently to, to damage it. Um, and I don't wear mine often. I would basically wear them pretty much just to go live or if it was like Christmas and I was going to someone's house for an event, but I don't wear them around town like to go to the grocery store. Now, um, now that you're fully gray, do you wear, would you wear them just for fun? You know, just, just to change things up still? Yeah, I, um, yeah. I think uh, maybe we can talk about this too, but I think for me, um, an area that that really uh, <clears throat> intimidates me is kind of dating yeah. um, with gray hair because I don't have a boyfriend now and, you know, I'm like, but I want people to know I'm gray, but then I'm like, oh, it's just kind of that, like, you know what I mean? And so I feel really confident in wigs. I'm still developing the confidence with the gray hair. Like I feel pretty confident, but it's mostly like styling. The fact that, um, and again, maybe that's something we could talk about, but it's, it's difficult 
for me at least to style gray hair because of the heat tools and not being able to use them as much. And so I have a confidence in being able to use the curling wands and the flat irons to really like make your hair look the way you want it to. And then I'm also trying to figure out another thing to kind of point out to people I think is that when your hair's gray, you might like it looking different than when you had your other, your dyed hair. So for me with the, the, the dark hair, I preferred it always straight with some curls sometimes and the beachy waves, but I feel like I might almost prefer some wave in my hair when it's gray versus straight because of the color, like it's, it's, it's more of a champagne taupe. I don't know. It's not that silvery silver that I love. So it's also just trying to figure things out. I'm still in the discovery phase. I'm not, this is not my perfect phase yet, but, but we're getting there. My only frustration, but I think like if I can't style my hair, you know, I wear it up a lot in a bun, like when I'm out um, and I just don't want that grandma look. So I'm like, I hope it doesn't look like grandma look, but um, I, I do that. And then if, if I really just feel like I'm not feeling confident about my hair, I have my wigs to turn to. So that's always nice. I brought the more fun ones. I mean, well, this is the one that's the most fun. Let me, I just took them. They come in a, um, like a shoe box like this. This is just one of the cheaper ones. It's synthetic. I'm just trying to make it look nice. It's kind of hard to show. So it's a pink wig. I don't know if you can see there's dark roots and it's short. So it's straight. So it's, it's kind of probably hot her to tell without it being on me, but this is what it looks like. I hope that's giving you a good idea. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, this, this is probably one of my favorite wigs. Um, it has all these kind of closures in it. So the way that um, if people aren't familiar with a, a wig, the you know, way it works is it has little clips. So it kind of clips into your hair um, and it's got um, some kind of like tightening little elastics in the back so that it will really stay on your head. So this one's uh, not looking so good on the inside. It's taken some abuse because it's my favorite wigs. So I actually need to order another one. And um, it's from Uniwigs. Okay. If people want, want to know, UNI wigs. Yeah, that's a beautiful yeah. color. Wow. What I like about this, it looks really natural because of the roots. So it looks like it really was my roots. And then I just yeah, did pink on the ends. I love I that. Like the, um, I like the, uh, um, I love the, the length of it because it's longer in the front and it's kind of a little bit shorter in the back. It's just, it's really, it's just really pretty. It's my favorite, one of my favorite wigs. These wigs run anywhere from like $80 to like about $130 and they're synthetic. So they're really affordable, um, you know, for anybody to buy and pick up if you just kind of want a, uh, you know, a fun, a fun change. One thing I find interesting is when we first talked about you using wigs, I think I was thinking something crazy, which is I thought that you were doing what some women do, which is their hair is going gray. So they, let's say this part of their hair doesn't match their ponytail, like their ponytail is black, but this is gray. So sometimes they'll tuck their ponytail in under a gray, what do you call it? Um, those hair pieces, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I got a super blonde platinum um, ponytail. And then I was going to use kind of um, like toners because I felt like, okay, I'm pretty safe with the toner to not dye, to tone it, to kind of make it more of a gray ashy color. And I just found that those ponytails for me, I'm not a, I'm a, I'm great with a curling wand and a flat iron, but I'm not a girl who can make my hair look amazing. Like I'm more of a makeup person. Mm -hmm. So I found them really hard to, first of all, they're very heavy. They're kind of like the kind that I bought was like a Britney Spears longer one that I think I've seen influencers get. They're very heavy. They give you, they were giving me headaches and yeah. they're hard to kind of maneuver with your, your hair underneath. I just found like a wig is so much easier. You literally throw it on your head. You're done. So now, what about, I, I always worried that if I had a wig, I would get hot. Do you get hot with them or not too bad? <laughs> it's funny you say that because, you know, I watch all those real housewives and I think like the real housewives in Atlanta, like it's so hot over there. I'm like, how are these women wearing wigs in the summer? I don't even understand. <laughs> Um, I, I have to say wigs are amazing for the winter. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, it's like so warm and it, you know, it's yeah. cold outside and you have that extra heat, but in the summer, yeah, I, they're not, they're, they're, they're hot for sure. And I, I don't like the feeling of kind of sweating underneath. Um, um, I always wear like, um, I don't think I have one here, but you wear like a nylon stocking, like, you know, over your hair, you, you put your hair in little, you know, section it up and put a little ponytails and pin it in the back people do it different ways. You put this nylon and then you put the wig over. And so, yeah, they can be warm. I feel like 
Um, the more expensive ones are not as warm and the, the cheaper ones are warmer. That, that makes sense probably because especially synthetic hair is probably a lot heavier than um, the real hair. And what about um, in terms of headaches, like you're mentioning, like sometimes if I wear bobby pins like up here, it really gives me a headache. Did you get headaches from wearing the wigs even when it wasn't hot out? Um, you know, not from that, but I remember, <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't even believe I'm telling you this. But when I was driving home, when I first got the wig from that wig, I think it's called the wig shop. I'm pretty sure I'll get you the name. And I was driving home and it was like not properly fitted on my head. And I, I it was like too tight or something I, or too loose. It was falling off. It was so crazy. I had to turn around and go back to them. But um, they, they made it. So the one that I got, I think it was, it was on the tighter side. It's, it's a little bit more petite. And I don't know if I could have maybe, no, they fit me. I, now I'm thinking maybe it could have been a size up because it's, it's tight. It's tighter than my synthetic ones. So that sometimes I feel like overall I can get a headache. I mean, what is the saying? Beauty's pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many wigs did you end up buying total? I'm just curious. Yeah, I'll have to count them. I have, um, so I have a, a gray one, by the way, I bought a long gray one, kind of like your color, a little bit lighter. Cause I think I figured I'll just try this gray look out early. So, Oops. and I have a blonde one, which I have here. I have pink, gosh. A, a lavender one, uh, like my own hair color. I'm trying to think, what else do I have? I feel like, oh, and I have another blonde one with dark roots. So what is that? It's at least six, maybe seven, something like that. And are they all straight or did you get any curly ones or, you know, how, um, how different are they from each other? Well, um, you know, I went by the color of the hair mostly, but I find a lot of these synthetic wigs have uh, if they're longer, they'll be long and they'll have all these curls at the bottom. And I feel like they look like wigs. They look yeah. more fake. And so, because no one has this voluminous hair and then with all these beautiful curls at the bottom, most people yeah. don't. And so I found like the pink one that I just showed you looks more, um, that's the look I prefer, but I just buy what's there. So they don't all have like a lot of straight wigs, but I find when they're straight like that, they look more real. Like, I feel like when there's all these curls and stuff, I'll kind of show you this blonde one. I mean, it's probably going to look white to you. Um, I figured why not be platinum blonde if I can gather this. Um, and this one was so long and I cut it. So it just, cause I cut it to make it look like more of a shorter platinum blonde. So it's this one, I'll hold it back here. Yeah. And you can, you can kind of see the curls. Yeah, and it was super long, curly, and I just felt it looked fake. So I don't even know my job on cutting it was perfect, but it just looks more more natural if it's shorter. When they're super long, yeah. So I prefer the straight wigs, but they're harder to find. They tend to like to put like curl in them for whatever reason. It's just, yeah. It's just the style right now. I remember when uh, I was a kid in the 70s, I came out to LA to visit my father and his new wife. And I was little, I mean, I must have been four. And she had long hippie hair, you know, that long blonde hair that was parted down the middle, with the, the leather fringe jackets and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I, I went to see them one morning, like early in the morning and crawled into bed with them. And she had really short hair. But then when I saw her at breakfast time, she had long hair again. I remember as a kid being completely flipped out by that and didn't really understand it. But um, the reason I brought that up was I, when I was a little older, I bought myself one of those hippie wigs at a garage sale. And that's how all the wigs in the seventies, I remember, were just straight long like down to your waist and just straight part in the middle that was that was it so yeah oh yeah I have one other wig too so I do have seven that is a more of a kind of like a caramel with the darker roots and it gets lighter a little bit more blonde towards the ends and that one's straight too and I just prefer the straight ones I but I, I love the straight hair yeah it just looks more natural I think you know now that you're talking about this, I kind of want to go out and buy a wig. <laughs> you know, it's you like, it sounds like fun. my place in um, in Hollywood. And I mean, those are those are the most expensive ones. And then the ones online. Yeah. Why not? I think every woman should have a wig. It's kind of like makeup or clothing. It's like it's fashion. So you can just kind of switch up your look. You know, it's it's fun. And then you yeah, confuse they people. They see you like like you said, you got confused as a child. They see you like online, I kind of always like think it's funny. I'm like, oh, people see me with all different color hair. And they really were like, well, what color is your hair really? They kept asking me that. They didn't know. Every day I show up looking different. I love that. It's fun. So one thing I wanted to ask you was um, how long did you wear the wigs while your gray hair was growing out? Like, did you 
from the minute you started letting your hair go gray, start wearing the wigs when you're doing these Facebook lives. And then you were just going gray kind of in secret under the wigs. Like how did Not you use exactly. I, I kind of feel like my skill is I was a master at hiding the gray. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and I, what I did initially is before I, I got the wigs, you know, because again, I got a really expensive wig to begin with. Cause I felt uncomfortable wearing a wig at all. And I felt like people would know, and I wanted to make sure no one knew was my hair. But prior to that, I would start with the headbands. So, you know, you wear a thick headband, right? So you, you can kind of push your hair back like this and you just got a really thick headband. That's kind of starting to hide the gray, you know? And then it progressed where I would wear um, hats. So I would wear, I did Facebook lives wearing like baseball caps or not really a cute hat, but something like that. So I literally had like this much gray and then I, you know, it would be dark here. And so my, my baseball cap would cover it. And then I put like little braids or something. So nobody had any idea. So I went for walks like that because I just was like, as I wasn't comfortable at the beginning. So I was pretty, I think I was, I had quite a bit of gray before I then said, I, I can't, now I can't fool people anymore. <laughs> now <Yeah. clears throat> they're going to know pretty soon. I'm like running out of time and luck. So I'm going to have to do something. And that's when I went to go get the wigs. So I've had the wigs for about a couple of years. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And then, um, did you ever reveal your gray hair to these people on Facebook lives just out of curiosity? Like, do you feel comfortable with your hair now to like be out in public with it on online? Yeah. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie and say I'm a hundred percent comfortable. I feel pretty comfortable, but it, it's still, it, it, it's something to get used to. I think, you know, we've seen in this, this group that you're talking about Facebook group that, and there's so many of them that a lot of women, like it's a struggle at first. You're, you know, you're yeah. still, some people really embrace it and some people have a, more of a struggle. Um, and I think it, for me, it's more, still more of a little bit of a struggle because I, um, I never saw myself like going gray this early. Like it's not something I ever would have done if I didn't have an allergy, and, but you know, everything happens for a reason and, and it's a good thing. Um, but I did about a couple of weeks ago do my first Facebook lives and I thought, Oh my gosh, now like everyone's gonna know. And so I just, you know, went on there and I think um it's the day that you saw me with that with the red lipstick. And so I said, I feel really confident with the red lipstick on with the gray hair because it really, you know, and I probably shouldn't have worn that today, really just make your gray hair pop. And so I just I just went on and said, I'm gray, you know, hello, like you know, you know, and I even wrote um, I have an email list. Um, and I wrote to my my subscribers and I even said, um, it's like one of my most opened emails. It said, hi, look at my gray hair. That was the subject line. And then of course, yeah. everyone opened the email and they were like clicking on the link to see my gray hair because who's going to say hi, look at my gray hair. Nobody except for me, I guess. Yeah, I love it. And you know, the thing is, since this quarantine happened, I am seeing it even in LA a lot more than I ever did before, you know? So yeah. I think if the, hopefully the next generation of people will feel more comfortable with their gray hair because they'll see it's just a different color. Like if we could just get into the mindset that this is just a different shade of hair color. It doesn't necessarily mean yeah. you're old because some of us like you and me, I started getting gray hair in my teens. You, you said you saw your first ones at, at around age five. You know, a lot of us go gray young. It depends on your ethnic background and genetics. Like I'm also anemic and I found out recently that that can also cause early graying, you know? So it's like, wow. there's a whole bunch of reasons we go gray. It's not unusual, but the way that people have been covering it up for 50 to 70 years, it, it makes it seem like it's unusual, but it's really not, you know, but it feels it's, like it's still, right. it's, it's hard to, you know. yeah. You totally. can't just, yeah, it's just a matter. Go, sorry, go ahead. I say, you just can't change the culture overnight, you know, like the, like we've been conditioned to think that this is something nobody does. So it does take a little while to get used to it, but hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll feel eventually like you're, you're happy that, um, I don't want to say you're happy you got an allergy. Nobody's going to be happy about that, but you'll be happy with the hair and you'll feel confident with it, you know? Yeah, so. no. And, and I do for the most part, I just, I think the now it's not even the color so much. What the issue for me is the styling part. Like I feel right. like I don't have the control that I had before. You have control when you can dye your hair. So it's a loss of control there, right? That we're used right. to. And you have control when you can style your hair. So that's also like a loss of control. So I feel like that is really the main thing. Like, it's just about the styling now. It's not even really the color as much. It's just like, I feel it's like, oh no, you know, I have gray hair, but on top of it, like it's the styling. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, I was going to tell you, I just did a video recently where I talked to the owners of the Color Lounge in Burbank, and they talked not just about salon transitions to gray, but also how to deal with things like frizzy gray hair or um, other things. 
And one thing they said that I didn't know is, and I have to go back to the video and watch it again, but she said um, to avoid the frizz that you should use a good conditioner and not rinse it out all the way, that it kind of coats your hair. I think probably in a way, the same way the hair dye did where it gets in there and it, it does something to the cuticle of the hair where it fills in the gaps. Right. So that's something to, to think about is maybe um, finding a really good conditioner and, and not rinsing it out all the way. And then maybe that would help, you know? Yeah, I know that helps. It's, it's, it's really, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm still like addicted to those hot tools and I'm frustrated. It's like a little bit of a frustration, but I'll figure it out as I go. I mean, I'm lucky. We're lucky that we have hair to begin with, no matter what color it is. So I'm just, I'm happy that I have, you know, good hair still. Yeah. You have good thick hair and um, it's definitely a blessing because I've known several people actually have alopecia. I mean, that's really hard to deal with. So yeah. So we all have to remember that when we're feeling bad about some of these things that come up with our hair, you know, I've got crazy yeah. cowlicks, you know, I do all too. Over my head. <laughs> do you? <laughs> so. yeah, mine are all over the place. That cow was really busy the day I was born. So. In terms of maintenance for the wigs, like how do you store them so they don't get damaged? Do you have those little heads like we always see in the movies or what do you do? <laughs> yeah. Well, I have one of, one of the heads for, um, this expensive wig that I mentioned, but, um, I don't have, like, it takes up a lot of room, like seven of them. And I actually would like to get more. So I've literally kept them, you know, these are cheaper wigs. The ones I showed you, I've literally kept them in these totally fine in these, um, they're like shoe boxes and that's the way that they come shipped to you. And I've left those there. Just, I don't have room for seven heads, you know, along with clothes and everything. In an ideal world, yes, but I'm not too worried about these because these are more, I call them like disposable wigs. They're like, you know, $80, 130. They, they're not gonna last forever. I think when you get really expensive wigs, you have to have a head to put the wig on for sure. Um, but I think if they're, they're cheaper, I mean, I don't know what other people do. Like I said, that's an ideal scenario, but it does take up, a, it's too much room for me to take up at the moment. Yeah, I can see that. And um, yeah. with the synthetic wig, wigs, do you have to do any maintenance on those? I know you said with the more expensive one, you take it in to get washed and flat ironed, but for the cheap wigs, do you just put them in the box and they're pretty much okay? And yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, the same thing. It's about the 30 washes, but let's say you're someone like me that wears a wig twice a month. I mean, I can wear this a long time without washing it, but it's right. the same thing. They just need to be washed. Um, you want to be careful when you're washing wigs, not to like be aggressive and washing the hair. It's kind of more, you know, swirling it in, in like uh, soapy water and letting it soak. And um, you know, maybe, you know, cause th these are also, I forgot to mention their lace front wigs, which okay. means that they, they have a little bit of lace. So it, it's to mimic like a natural like root hair pattern. Um, at the, the front. So it's not just like a harsh cut off where it's just like hair starts. So with that lace, uh, it's delicate. That's why I will not wash the, the expensive wig myself. There's just no way because you don't want to destroy that lace because the more that the lace kind of recedes into the, the hairline, uh, then you're, you're out of, uh, sorry for that little bug, you're out of your wigs. So your wig has to, uh, you have to get a new wig basically. So since you have grown out your gray hair or since you started growing out your gray hair, have you had any negative comments from anybody or has it been fairly positive? Yeah, so um, it's really interesting. Um, when I first, first started posting, now this is online, I'll talk about offline, but online when I started posting my gray hair pictures, um, I noticed that like, I felt like at first more men were liking my pictures, which kind of surprised me. And I thought, well, that's, that's good news, right? You know. Yeah. <laughs> For the future when I date, uh, when I'm not busy working. Um, but I also got some really nice positive feedback from some ladies who follow me when I did my first Facebook Live and said that I looked great and it was, was really, really heartwarming and so nice. You know, on the flip side, there's always going to be people who have an opinion. Um, so one time that stood out to me was when I was, I was at the grocery store. Uh, I'm pretty sure my hair was all gray. It was one color at that point. It was up in a ponytail. And I literally got a couple items, champagne and something else. And, you know, it was literally five items and I was like trying to run out of there. And, and the checker who was actually an older woman. So it's kind of interesting, made a comment, like, I don't know why all you young people are dyeing your hair gray. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I'm like, I'm just trying to mind my own business and get out of here. Like with my, my champagne, I probably had a rough day already. And then I'm getting this. And I said, well, this is actually my hair color. And she's like, yeah, I don't know why all of you want to like have gray hair before you're old. 
And I was offended. So I went back actually, it's a grocery store I normally shop at. And so I went back a few days later and I just did pull the manager side who, who was a man, older man who had gray hair, by the way, white hair. And I said, Hey, you know, I just want to let you know, I don't want to get this woman in trouble, but I, I do want to let you know, like, you know, I felt really uncomfortable. She commented on my appearance. I'm passing through the line. I'm just trying to get out of here and buy a few items. And he made a comment that like, he's like, you know what? I'm really sorry. And I said, you know, I'm just, I'm not even comfortable yet. I mean, this was a long time ago, a year ago. And I said, I just don't really want you know, people even commenting on me. And he just said um, that she apparently had done that uh, to a lot of people would comment on their appearance in general. Like, I don't know what she was oh saying. My gosh. No filter. So, yeah. Apparently it wasn't only me. It was, a, it was an ongoing issue, but there's stuff like that. So, you know, I've gotten looks like when I, and I don't know if it was because I was less confident. I, I feel like even though we were talking about confidence earlier and I said, I'm not hundred percent confident, I'm pretty confident. Like when I go yeah. out, like I, I own it, it's, it's my hair. I have gray hair and just whatever, if you don't like it, that's your problem. But I do notice at the beginning and it could be the energy that I was giving off. Like I would be like at a Starbucks or in a coffee store and waiting in line to get my drink. And I noticed women looking at me kind of up and down. Yeah. And I really felt like, you know, like they were doing double takes and I, it made me uncomfortable. It just is kind of like, it's kind of like if you, you're just staring at somebody cause you don't like something about them. It was, it, it, I didn't get like a good vibe from it. So there's been stuff like that, but I think the most important part is just to realize like everybody's going to have their own opinion. It doesn't matter what other people think. It only matters what you think. And I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe we're the trendsetters, right? We're the right. trendsetters. We're the early adopters. So, you know, we're going to lead the way. And so eventually they're going to, they're going to be following us. Right. And what a lot of these is, I hate to say it, it usually often is ladies who are the harshest critics of other women who are going gray. If they only knew, like, I haven't been hit on this much in my life uh, <laughs> since I, as an older woman, cause I'm 53 now. And I have to say, Probably the last five years, I, I know, you know, five to 10 years, the flirtation level when I'm out in public has gone way down, you know, which is fine because when I was younger, I got a lot of unwanted attention and I actually was kind of liking the anonymity of not being bothered when you're out in public, you know, but, um, but actually it started going up, up again. It's like, once you have the gray hair, I think it's unusual. And, and a lot of men say they like it and they find it um, refreshing and real <laughs> and stuff. And um you know, so it's interesting. So these women don't know what they're missing because a lot of the women I know, they've never had so much interest in them as they have since they went gray. So, you know, it seems you know like what? there's a lot of men out there who like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just reminded me of a really quick story. I'll just share um, really fast is that I was walking on the strand. So, um, you know, this, cause you live in, in Los Angeles, but, um, you know, Manhattan beach, El Porto area with my dogs yeah. and, I, I don't know. I feel like it was like late afternoon one day, the sun was out, you know, I had my hair up, you know, in a, in a bun and with probably like a headband or something. And I'm just walking, minding my own business. I don't think I had a lick of makeup on, you know, I had my sunglasses on and I'm walking and this guy starts running after me. You just reminded <laughs> me of this. And he's this really good looking guy. I was like, and he's like, Oh my God, I love your hair. And I'm like, this is when I was still getting used to it. And I'm like, you do like kind of like yeah. what? And yeah. he was saying that he's a hairstylist and he does hair. And he, he basically was asking me out on a date. And I just, I was like stunned. Like I couldn't believe it. And it made me feel so good. And it made, it boosted my confidence because I thought there's literally, he said, I was on the bike path and I had to come up here to, to find you. He got off the bike path with his bike and it was like chasing me down <laughs> um, and I was, and was paying me all these compliments, like, you know, you're beautiful, all this stuff. And I was just kind of stunned and I, I shouldn't have been, it sounds terrible just over gray hair, but I just was, you know, like it was a guy my age and is probably early forties or something. And I just was like blown away by it. So it made me feel so good. And, and I, I think there's more men that, that love gray hair, like you're saying, than, than you would think. I mean, yeah. look at, look at Keanu Reeves dating. His girlfriend has like silver gray hair. Yeah, I know. And um, just, I, I do an anonymous survey for, for my blog every year, just to ask people what they want to talk about. And I do want to do a, a post sometime about dating while gray, because like, I'm, I'm married and we've been married for 20, I've even lost count, like 27 years. So I obviously haven't mm. been dating for a while, but I want to hear from more women because the women I do hear from say it hasn't affected their dating life like they thought it would. It, it's been good. It hasn't been negative. I think it's other women that are the harshest critics 
more, if, if you're going to have harshness critics, which there aren't as many as I thought about that either, it's, it tends to be more women than men, you know? So the, although the only negative comment I really had was an, an elderly man that I know, but I think the older generation is more dead set against hair, uh, uh, letting your hair go gray. Cause he, yeah. he just saw my hair and he was like, you know, I like your other hair color. You need to dye it back. And I said, well, I like my hair this way. And he's like, oh, okay. Like he, he was fine with it, but he felt free to tell me that, but he, he's actually come around and really likes it now. But, um, but I do think it seems like from what I hear anecdotally, a lot of people in their seventies, eighties really don't like us letting our hair go gray. Cause they feel like we're consigning ourselves to look old, but that's because they, they don't see it as another hair color anymore. You know, like we do, they, they see it as a sign of age, you know, because they, they were hiding it. So yeah. yeah. Oh, well, hopefully that's changing. Hopefully, well, yeah. yeah. Embrace, so, embrace who you are. I guess that's what this is all about. Embracing who you are. And that's your natural color. That's actually who you really are if you have gray hair. Well, thank you for being here today and telling us about your journey. And using the wigs would be a great option for a lot of people. I think that's a, a great thing to do. Yeah. Thank you. I really enjoyed this. I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, you're welcome. And I think I'm going to have to go out and buy some fun wigs just for the hell of it. Why not? You know, have some fun. Why not? Yeah, I will give you all the info. I definitely check them out. <laughs>